Now in this last part of the question, we've got to find the value of t when the particle p is moving parallel to the vector i, moving to the left. Well, when it's moving to the left, it's actually going to be generally in this kind of position here. So it's going to be moving in that direction. With what velocity though? I don't know. But what I do know is going to be something of the form, so let's say some constant, lambda, times i. There's going to be no j component. Unlike these two velocities have j components. Now, this is happening when t equals t, t seconds. And what I'm going to do is turn back to the equation for acceleration. We know that acceleration is equal to the change in velocity, v minus u divided by the time taken. Now, the acceleration is constant because force was constant. We're told that in the question, so the acceleration must be constant. And we found out in the previous part that the acceleration was i plus 3j. So therefore, what I've got here is that i plus 3j must equal the change in velocity. So if we look at the change in velocity that's taken place between t equals naught and t seconds, then the final velocity v is this one here, lambda i. Now we subtract the initial velocity, which was 2i minus 5j. So 2i minus 5j. And we know that this change in velocity took place over a period of t seconds. So we just put t there. Now it looks like we've got two unknowns in this equation. But don't let that put you off, because what we can do now is just simply multiply both sides by t, and we would therefore get it, or ti, ti would look better, and then for the j component, plus 3t in the j direction. And that leaves us with lambda minus 2 in the i direction, so we can put that in brackets, lambda minus 2 in the i direction. And then as for the j components, we've got minus minus 5j, in other words, plus 5j. Now when you have two vectors that are equal to one another, it means that the components must be exactly the same. So in other words, t here must match up with the lambda minus 2. And the 3t for the j component must match up with the 5 here. And it's the j components that we can equate to one another. So if we equate the j components, let's just put a little intro here, equate j components, then what we have is that 3t must equal the 5. So therefore 3t equals the 5. And to work out t, all we need to do is divide both sides by 3. So you get t equals 5 thirds seconds. So, that gives us our value of t. If the question had asked us to go on and find out what that velocity was there, all we would need to do is just say that t, when we compare the i components, t would equal lambda minus 2, and just substitute t being 5 thirds in there and get what lambda is. OK. Well, I hope that's given you some idea, and I do believe, as I say, sketching a diagram should help your understanding of the problem. And that I would always encourage that you do. All right?